Yeah, Ah, This story is about service, what it means to serve and keep on serving in the face of danger destruction and the cruelest loss that a parent can suffer. It is the story of Charlie Nguna, who all his life has served the Kruger National Park. Kruger, as the national park is known, dominates South Africa's eastern border, covering 20,000 square kilometers. It is bigger than many small countries. Kruger is a wilderness managed by humankind. Here, science and technology serve Africa's great game animals. On a planet consumed by human development, escaping into nature has become a precious commodity. Kruger is the backbone of a billion rand wildlife tourism industry. But there is more to Kruger than wildlife. The park has a human history. People lived inside its boundaries. Some became field rangers or police boys, as such men were once called. Kruger was a colonial institution. Images of the time often positioned black rangers as exotic background extras. The names of these rangers are unknown, their stories unwritten. But Charlie Nguna is very much alive, and his story may speak for all his long forgotten colleagues. Charlie Nguna no longer lives in the Kruger. His home is now in Cork, a village 20 kilometers outside the park. Kok used to fall within the apartheid homeland of Gazangulu. There is little formal employment here. Most families depend for their income on someone working somewhere else. But traditionally, the economy is all about cattle. The Kamalame Mushad Kun. Ganzele, it's a macola. Eh, the betelala, by bona. Quabobano, a slatalish, Shinicoca lo cool and gop, Nusare, Nusena, Nintopu. He runs a shish. Charlie Kuna 
was born in 1930. Ya la singa sukela ko andina ringwa na mara lerkulu ra skwembu andi vita iko kwana ntsena ndi nyimpini. Charlie, the fighter, began to work for the Kruger National Park in 1948 and rose to the rank of sergeant. Military discipline and training helped rangers to defeat poachers and survive the dangers of the bush. Charlie is now in retirement, but he has kept his uniforms. Naibon, Yodi. Eh, let me inform you as to the organization court. Let's bump my pushing. This is the court. Let me inform you. Eh, let's see the patron in the court. I got to ask them a hand. Ask them a shot. La pa besfaga ma patronis. Loko ego gani informole? One anish bam. Lo one atamela ashkibu. It's a hard and bail. Say, if I come to another, it's big knife, low cool, a shaku loco and galaita, you could tell a combishman as catita, pazamis, who caught a good keep on quano with her. Lani, em lengena, if I got Masandas, Lawat and Guabella. Malume, Teregas Kokoza, a good Sembek and Gopu. Someone is this Tibag I saw. Malume, Logar Kokaya, Maluma Sati, and Yama Anga Sek. Logokuma Malume, Wai Sati, Maluma Seganyam, O Alad, I would tell the boys I am a poet. Said a Shingako, Longdu Malume Utsembekil, Impera Egas Kokoza, Bazabam Kipa and Peshin. In these parts, a pension often contributes to a traditional investment. Yeah, the Nkuna family crawl used to be inside the Kruger Park. Zebra and Impala would graze beside the cattle. Kruger was a tough environment for cattle, but the family herd did well and the Nkunas seemed wealthy. Then tragedy struck the family and struck again and yet again. Eventually, the family left. Charlie will guide us now through Kruger to the places that mark his life journey. Charlie, being retired, may no longer carry a gun through his old patrolling ground. Corporal Tommy Mokakane will be his protector and a guardian for his memories. Oh, Lani, eh,
اوه الا انت اوكي ليش؟ لو كنت لو كنت انزين كباب لا شيء كان دي جانو اه دي جا كنت لونغر اوكي اه سي ايرشي شانغو شلاقان ماكتنيس نتيس شلاقان غوب لو كنت تنقول ليش؟ اونغز واب زي تيس اوكي اه بالونغو باري Spider tone. Okay. Spider tone. All right. For more than half a century, Charlie Kuna has been a mentor to young rangers and researchers. Eh, wabona la kuhumela kuhumale sha black rhino. Itoilet ya shole. Eh, asubona. Eh, black rhino. Le kui yuma yochelele. Kwa kuni matuka ya msinya la. Wawabona ile shicha kaso. Waiti raino yuma ka toilet. Ifumba kwa laini ba round round. Le shinga ngo zile shishipuku le shi. Andu kuna shawo shila kutaka ngwe shitabu wana sa kuni. Nchini le shia shinga ima la ya. Ok. Ngafa wabangu. Ay fambe. Oh hey. Mr. Mene tu anyana isho. Ya. Beja ale usita ikomba ndele. Yeah, I go. Lee, can you stone. Baba file, dum lanza ka ay asa ka muka ika. Chele le ria, rikomba la kunga ni mati, andeka la kunga na mati. Ranga, rawasat. Yeah, Larry. Rawa noon. Yeah, Lenga Salanda. Yeah. Eh, Mkakan. Wawana and Sinyalu. Eh, is she into Shakai? A room for Mango. A cube, Loku, Ufi Wheelie. Eh, Nile Nitinganga. He let you. Tu unta ka ato la ka ya loku bara ku bethela mutilo. Ene ni uti ra in food uti ra ni le ma toilet. Ero paper ra ira ka. Yeah. Es longo bari webs webs. Yeah. Ansinyal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Inga kubek. Hi family. Le esira le re. Era mat tafen im zuli. Ata ne ash. Kas mat tafen so le siziom tumbelelela. Sam tubulash bam. Ya. Sa antibe sa uwele queen. Kumbuwele queen. Neti la. Ela se banga murara ba abam chila sako. Mat tafen im zuli was a powerful Swazi chief who was murdered around 1890. His name lives on. Mzuli is a common local surname. Charlie played a key part in tracking down Mzuli's grave and gave it its only sign post. Yeah. Okay. Charlie also helped to map out the region's historic transport routes. And then I le, I found a short. Yeah, I found a map pushing my fambala. Niti donkey, the rare nyam at famba ikwal. Yeah, at fambale. Ayana moon and then I. Ayama siku. And then then I le, ayama zambiki. Em combo. Mara mnao ma maiku meiriko kufamba baano. Seo so sifika siengetela. Nda uleti banka mba kako saiti tiba. Aiti samoro tumanza ya ya buka, tumanza ya buka. Se ya atana na bo. Tela kuni nkari lo ifamba nje ima baisikiri, ima fine part. Fika ibeka ma baisikiri, se inge na kwa tiba. Mara lo kuro ipelela, tama ifake ma jazz. Lukuru pelelo, oetelela kwa leno we. Kale, sarle zote rungu zinakaro alo wakuri. Ai chapa angala ni ingwe. Ai ingwe ni nyari. Lukufamba tatu kwa umelela kali 
Shinga Shikosha could be good quality. Yele, it danger and go. As Cocotulish Loco, Umama Patron, Italamananga, I tell a show. Shinima Kala Yaka, Sayaku Seka, and the Loco writing up. Is Cocotu, Uncocotu, Mrs. Swat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Mm. Okay. Mm. Oh, mm. Our Baba Mala in nineteen by nay, Baba Mala will ever call a commission bar. I found a commission bar. Ah, a babu was a good batanja. Ah, nay, good. Ah, yeah. You could say Puga, you could say Puga. What? Ah, Shuma shut to tomb. Ah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. No, and then this is coming. Eh, me dad Najan. Luly, hm. Eh, Lucky a report from the time tells more. After handcuffing the poacher, Charlie lifted Jan onto his own shoulders and carried him several kilometers back to the road. While carrying Jan, Charlie also marched the poacher along. How did Jan look at Usivella? La Baba Telescope. Kuta <laughs> Uh, Steve, I have America color. You say give a cash, cash food. I go and tell and tap on a. It's home time, na lit. Send tell and tap to bona and tap to boka so kun pela. Ta asha is a kili na. Okay. Hey, lo kun di tu aba ku e ala nuba dale mukom boba dale. Hey, ah, se fam de sol. Today, headlines announced the arrival of a new breed of poacher. Equipped with helicopters, killing for the international trade in rhino horn. Rhino poachers are the foot soldiers of extinction. They undermine the first and oldest purpose of Africa's national parks, which was to protect game animals from total massacre. In the 19th century, South Africa's wild animals were hunted as never before by waves of settlers with horses and guns. The quagga and the blue antelope were wiped off the face of the earth. By the turn of the century, even abundant species like springbok and impala had vanished from much of their range. The Cape Colony and later the Transvaal Republic began to create parks where game could be protected. The Transvaal government's pro-protection lobby mapped out a park between the Sabi and the Crocodile Rivers. Over the coming century, this park 
would grow fourfold and be named the Kruger National Park in honor of Republican President Paul Kruger. Just a year after the proclamation of the park, Paul Kruger's government was forced into the Anglo-Boer War. When the war ended, the park fell under the British administration. Its the new moment arrived. was a soldier, Major Hamilton James Stevenson formally Hamilton. unveils the memorial. He was trained at Sandhurst, Britain's premier school for army officers, and fought against the Boers in Natal. As park warden, Stevenson Hamilton kept on fighting. He began the park's never-ending war against poaching, prosecuting every poacher he caught, including senior white policemen. Charlie Nguna, too, has fought in this tradition against all comers. I'm a SAP, I'm a Tola, Babulale is in Pala, but Kualisi Roli, La Pefai Lab. She says, I'm a Kalipsu, I'm a Scott. I'm a Kamga, I'm a SAP, I'm a Spread. Nasia Lapa, eh, Kwalui Walapo, Waluaga Kul, Wang to Bulang and Gena Pagas, a manzin. But Baham Bang Shari and Shari Marabaza Nabatol. Ole le spider le le, uso le si ba funda uso iku crush. Mwaba webona kufage la apa kwa zofaga la defense ya. Kuzo figa la apa kwenye abantu ana kuzo enza jesi ni skati kufage abantu. Nebelu mwaba funda kwenye defense gule ndole. Mwai buga kase uza ubona kuto kuki kenge anda. Ya. Charlie Kuna spent his boyhood in this part of Kruger. His father, Merriman, and uncle Elphas both worked as rangers. The Kuna family homestead was deep inside the boundaries of the park. Here they grew crops. <laughs> The Nguna family also kept cattle in the park, and in the 1930s, this was permitted. The <laughs> Look, sing it in BC, full at home. Look, yeah, Laya and Gwenza, Kunganish is Zibaco. A pelly, like Tanganako, inquire, we tell about fun, I tell a slambaco. And now I look slamben, so what to home, Tarila, Tarila Guada. Look, we go, eh, over nothing gala. Say, teacher, try to think of little things, little cool. Think I set up to two moments. In Africa, cattle, lions and other wildlife had coexisted for centuries. But to commercial beef and dairy interests, cattle that had mixed with wildlife were a menace. Mm. Foot and mouth is a viral disease that attacks cattle and other cloven hoofed animals. They suffer severe blisters on their mouths and feet, lose weight and produce less milk. Foot and mouth is extremely contagious and is carried by many species of wildlife. Cattle that mix with wildlife often get foot and mouth. Usually, the disease is not fatal. Most cattle recover. So traditional cattle keepers tend to tolerate infected animals. But in Charlie's boyhood, the authorities had zero tolerance. Hmm. 
Foot and mouth had been detected in two herds within the park. The government vets responded by destroying most of the region's cattle. Within Kruger, the vets killed 1,300 head. In the native reservations, beyond, they killed tens of thousands, regardless of whether or not they were actually infected. Mysteriously, some herds escaped. <laughs> The cattle killings of 1939 shattered African homesteads across the region. Cattle had been a source of pride. Each bull, cow or ox had had its own name. Communities had bonded by exchanging cattle and by sharing cattle pastures. Cattle were also currency. But the government paid no compensation. Charlie and Tommy are standing on the ridge of a mass grave. Below their feet are the bones of scores of cattle, the cattle of Charlie's childhood. History tells that Stephen Hamilton was outraged by the cattle killing. He complained to the chief native commissioner that Africans in the park would soon be starving. The commissioner responded by authorizing the purchase for emergency rations of a single crate of condensed milk. Cattle were never to recover their place in the life of Kruger Park. Baba Melemana, na elfasi ba shavetri. Mara laba nguanyan kwe shavuti mbongol. To atinga nanki inga nete kumu lechia. Okuwe shinga jiwi. Ambisho fa wote kwa ulasha. Loku uniti omo. Uta dalo sota la tarima. Meleka wa ukuma kati wa ume nkwasa. Nako loku ifile, waja, nako loku laku taba, uni sa kumaka sa timamba, uwe taba, ubita ba makwenu, mashakawe, nitatama kujiwa. Nitajika nubu ya, ya, nifamba na atoti yali, ya. Yes, di tirep, gopu, kaheri, karinda anda, di kula, di lusat umtai plasin. Se akela mestelole den antekan gena kishini. Di tiren gopu ema kishini. Sekela balungu laba, baba kwezi, ni baba wakarinda anda. Harry Waluta, was a ranger who had become a living legend. His nickname, Ridanda, came from the term for the Swazi loin cloth he sometimes wore. Waluta's wider fame, however, was based on his lion adventure of 1903. Waluta's memoirs describe how, riding through the Kruger region at dusk, he and his horse were attacked by two lions. One of the lions knocked him to the ground and dragged him away. 
Waluta still had his knife. He began to thrust it into the lion, and on the third thrust, the lion dropped him and crawled away to die. The adventure, which had several more twists and turns, became a legend to generations of safari goers. Waluta's knife and the lion's perforated skin became popular exhibits at Kruger. Chalinguna's own experience of lion attacks was to end in heartbreak. But right now, another animal begs attention. Charlie had not yet sighted the species he helped to save. On the third day, the sighting comes. Rhino populations were also decimated by the Rinderpest epidemic in 1896. In the Kruger region, both the black and the white rhino went extinct. Rhino returned to the Kruger in the 1960s through translocation from other reserves. Translocation demands intense teamwork and long hours on the road. The first field ranger selected for the Kruger's first rhino translocation team was Charlie Nguna. <laughs> From early in his career, Charlie Nguna was noted as somebody special. The Nguna name carried weight at Kruger, and in particular, the name Elphus Nguna. Elphus was Charlie's uncle. Stories are still told about Elphus how he was attacked by a leopard and slew it with his pen knife. How poachers, on hearing that Elphos was after them, would give themselves up. And how the herd ranger would never appoint new staff without first consulting Elphos. <laughs> Charlie's relatives are joining him for this part of the journey. Elphus died at age 85, still a park employee. The night before his funeral, at the heart where his body lay, all his colleagues showed their respect by sleeping outside. An ox was slaughtered for the funeral feast. Its hide would be folded as a coffin around Elphus's body. The 1970s were the years of deepest apartheid, but Elphus's funeral was attended by all. Reports tell how bush-hardened white rangers wept openly. Hilda Stevenson Hamilton, widow of the park's founding warden, was among the mourners. In accordance with custom, the buttons were cut off the tunic of Elphus's uniform. The uniform was placed on his coffin, followed by his hat. Hey, Elphus, I am a park. I am a park. I am a park. 
ke e elfas le thuna la khelili ai fanele ishavi le ridwe se ba kutsiketani talungisa okay yeah funa nje leli ngiyafuna kulivusa le le imbokoti yakhe asila ligwayi ngalo mina ofuthi lokho ndirime ndiphunile undi jonzi sentiro enkwawa ndi jonzi sani kufamba la nobe ni nkwakwa ndi jonzi sani kwaso lesi asiri la khela ndi bvela ni shahari ni vutomi bya shahari swaku fane shahari shanya njani shitameli wa njani baba elweye lokuni sosi ari kohonda bona ni bana ba hena ba tukulu ba hena ba jonzi so saseka ngopfu loku utira mali ya kusungula kulaba ushaba homu eleswa ai jonzi sa so akwe homu in 1975 the same year that elfus died the government gave the park a statue not of elfus but another uncle wom paul kruger the president after whom the park was named President Kruger had become the iconic worm or uncle of Afrikaner nationalism. The statue's arrival followed the failure of a far grander scheme to carve Wom Paul's face into a Kruger copy on a scale that would compete with America's Mount Rushmore. South Africa's liberal press had protested and Kruger's Rushmore was eventually reduced to a statue. It was erected just outside the park at the Kruger Gate. The Kruger statue has become a curiosity of history for passing tourists. But in the politics around the park, statues, memorials and historic graves have been flesh points of controversy. For they raise the question, to whom does this landscape belong? It's a Palerapa. Uh, 1957 colonial policies stripped africans of land today many parks face land claims lapha eh ngubabe lo alele lapha eh umele mani ngibona baba basifika bakurumaka nosikhukuza la ya basebenza nosikhukuza kakhulu saze nathe sazalwa lapha bonke labantu bazalelela kule ndawo the administrator The honorable Cor Smith and Denise Rates look excited. Endi twandi ngari kahle ekube le ndawo le se kuni banwanyane vai kotlombisa ka bale holobeka na he mara marumbi yabo ayi wa TV ayi nga tsamanga na bona bo bala balwa na government la ila kutekela hi munhu nako ayi labi ndawo le nchincha ila ba itsamisisa leswi Ebtongweni swandi tsunzukisa hezwi ya ku baba baba yetlelela hinkwabo baselela le ninga yakho abayanga bala wa ri mutu wabo The Nguna family lived under an arrangement that dated back to Stevenson Hamilton's time when park employees retired they were allowed to keep their family homesteads inside the park if the employee died the family could be expelled and the homestead erased se make kuma swa ku wabadza ndimteke ndi muisa a hospital isibedle se ndi ku ndila kutata hale kaya lo nfuka la nubuka thintwa tikona la se ndi ndlula ndi yakankanka imavundla la ya ndi abutisa ye akwe ndi twa shiduma ko la anti beswa ku sende njani mara ndi shibonile shiteni role kube na hele ku shata la tsangwe swa ku ye ku tirini ku nwanyana ka sitadilizela ndi Umele erin le sakufika ku kuchovi wa 92 1992 was a significant year for the Kruger National Park Mozambique on the park's eastern border had suffered almost 3 decades of war In 92 the fighting began to wind down peace came to Mozambique Mozambican refugees would often penetrate the park's boundary fence. Some were killed by lions. Lions always pose a danger to people who stray into their path, especially children. Leri 
Charlie discovered his daughter a day or so later. But first, his brother's family was attacked. Okay, Where the homesteads of the Nkuna family once stood, there is now only Bushfeld. With his relatives gone and evening approaching, Charlie Nkuna takes a final stroll through his old haunts. Oi, <laughs> <laughs> 
Lenjuna Sotala and Gopu, Night and Dows, Harim Senior in Competitor, actually, and some say. Say, who comes? Gunner Sunga, Merela, Subaba, Garanza, good. Let's say Ninga Jones, Kumakatan and Kuna, Charlie. Not long ago, a surprise was sprung on Charlie. In this world, there are people who are the models of dedication and commitment. And tonight, Sand Parks honors one of these special pillars whose life is intertwined with the Kruger National Park. It is an honor for me to announce the winner of tonight's penultimate award, the Lifetime Contribution Award. And this award goes to Baba Charlie Nguna. And <laughs> And Kumanga Kash, a Masungule, Gubita, Abitora Baba, Babita Elfas, Sebavita Meleman, Bakuvan Lava, Abake, Pavin Gate, Sevandi Vita, Babita, Meba, which had in Kun, Selo Gundia, and Kumaso, and Nigalis, when he was a bunch. To Baba Chalinguna, to Baba The twenty two in the second group, Mamma, and the year I got TV shop, oh, Melee. Yeah, the Abangan Sam Selanga Chu. We are humbled by the invaluable contribution that he has made. He can still share the experience and I'm told that he has a memory of an elephant. This will be an asset for this country for generations to come. Congratulations, Nadinguna. I'm humbled as a person and I think we're humbled as a nation. We salute you. Mara and Alakutira Yokube Kalakungarna Male, say Aningasna, Tungisanchum Salaka Mara and Pinendu Mile, Ebaka Garwa and Sophikil, Saint Pinu and Yeah, yeah.